Wow. Wow. What a vision, what a sight. Are you having fun? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Excellent. It's great to see so many of you here having fun and passion and enthusiasm and conviction. Do you think Keir Starmer could organise this sort of event? Do you think Rishi Sunak could organise this sort of passion and conviction? Only Reform UK can organise such an event. Not only are we having fun here, but I've got to tell you, all of you, most of you, many of you, out on the campaign trail, hopefully you're having some fun too. There's, a, there's an extraordinary thing going on out there. I have to say I'm loving it where I'm campaigning. It's remarkable. We're having a load of fun. Lots of people saying, I'm with you, I'm with you. It's very exciting. People come along and give me hugs. But you must always keep your feet on the ground. And I was... You must never think you've convinced everybody. As I learned the other day. <laughs> I knock on one door, I get a big hug. And I think, yes, we're going to win. Four doors down. I knock on the door. And there's a technique to this. You knock on the door and you take a step back. <laughs> Just so the punch doesn't quite reach you. The door opens. The lady looks at me. I look at her. She looks at me again and she shakes her head. Not a chance and slams the door. <laughs> it keeps your feet on the ground, but we are having an extraordinary impact on this election. Something's happening out there. There's a whole bunch, there's millions and millions of shy reformers. Do you remember those shy Brexiteers? Now there's millions of shy reformers who on Thursday are going to come out and vote reform. Now, I'm very grateful to Paul for his kind words. I've, I've actually, he's a brilliant chief exec. I've never known him be quite so nice about me. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Um, I just want to say a few words about the journey because it has been pretty remarkable. It was just over three years ago that Paul and I looked at each other, a bit like that lady in the, in the door, and we thought, well, what do we do now? And just think about it. We were zero percent in the polls. We had a new brand that nobody had heard of, and we had the equivalent of effectively no money in the bank account. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a great outlook, to be honest. And Boris was up there in the polls, but we thought, I tell you what, let's buy a bus. <laughs> it's one of the first investments we made. And here it is today, the bus with Anne Whittacombe on top of it. <laughs> and, and that bus is helping campaigning. And then where I'm campaigning, my constituency, we've got a taxi. You may have seen on social media the taxi, it's decked out in our colours with the Union Jack on and most importantly, it's got a megaphone. <laughs> and last Monday, Widders was on the megaphone driving through Boston and Skegness shouting vote reform, vote Tice. It was remarkable. <laughs> Old school campaigning. And everyone laughed at us back then. They said, you're wasting your time. What are you doing? Go back to property. I tell you what, folks, they're not laughing now, are they? They're absolutely terrified. That's the truth. The Tories are terrified, which is why we're getting all the flack. What does it mean if you're taking a load of flack? It means you're over the target. That's the point. So the Tories are terrified. And then there's a bunch of folk in the media who seem to be terrified too. I know we've, I'm sure we've got some friends out there somewhere. Um, but they, they may not be Channel 4. 
<laughs> and, and they may not be the BBC. And maybe the next speaker might say a few words about them. But I actually do want to say, because there are some people in the media who do deserve a huge amount of credit and thanks. Because actually the truth is that without a bit of balance, without the ability and the capacity to talk, we wouldn't be here today. And so I personally want to say a massive thank you to Talk Radio and to GB News. They have... They've done what you should do in a democracy. They've wanted more debate, more discussion. Look at the other options outside the two-party system. And I think actually what they've done is they've done a massive, massive, constructive, positive contribution towards democracy in this country. Now, I do also want to thank Paul and his incredible team because when we started on this journey, there were literally five or six of us. And it was, it was extraordinary. And we did think that maybe we were barking up the wrong tree. And as we got, you know, very few votes in the first few by-elections, it was hard. But here we are today, the biggest political rally in this campaign. We went from 0% to the mid-teens as this election started. And that is remarkable. Why did it happen? Why did it happen? I think for one simple reason, and Anne touched on it earlier, common sense. We stand for common sense. And we also stand for three things that are probably the most important three things for all of us. Family, community and country. And it, if you look at our key policies, if you look at our key policies, and some of them take courage, and I'll talk about courage in a minute. I mean, Britain is completely broken. Britain needs reform at every level. But look at how the economy needs reform. Surely it's common sense to make work pay, to motivate people off benefits. It's common sense. That's why we have the policy to start income tax at £20,000. Surely it's common sense to have a vision for our healthcare in this country, still free at the point of delivery, before our enemies start attacking us. Common sense that we should have a bold ambition to get to zero waiting lists. We're the first party that had that ambition. Common sense. Surely it's common sense. No one else wants to talk about this word immigration, but surely it's common sense to have a smart immigration policy, not a mass immigration policy. It's basic common sense. And of course, the key to immigration is integration. It's absolutely critical. And that's who we stand for. That's what we are. And my goodness me, I also want to pay tribute to Zia. Didn't he speak brilliantly just now? Isn't he great? And surely it's common sense on law and order to get our police officers on the streets protecting us rather than sitting behind desks policing tweets, for heaven's sake. By the way, talking of social media, there's some breaking news that Nigel is going to break. Goodness me, you won't believe what's going on. It's common sense also, I think. And again, a lot of people get very upset. But I think it's common sense that there's only two sexes and two genders. I may be wrong. I think it's common sense 
that you adapt to climate change, you don't try and think you can stop the power of the sun for heaven's sake. And that's why, that's why we're the only party that has a common sense approach to this issue. And I have to tell you that finally, we're the only party that has the courage to say net zero, frankly, is not the answer. Yes, let's use technology, but net zero is making us poorer, it's killing our jobs, it's killing our industries, it's killing our economy. It's an absolute piece of madness. Developed in Westminster, I actually believe it's the greatest act of financial self-harm ever imposed on a nation by the Wallies in Westminster. <clears throat> and there's many other policies of common sense that we stand for. But time is pressing. There's a football match this evening, this afternoon. <laughs> Are we going to win? Yeah. Yes, come on! But one of the hardest things in life is leadership and courage. We have the courage to talk about these common sense policies. We have the courage and the leadership to take the brickbats. We have the courage to say when something doesn't make sense, when it's wrong. But let me tell you, nobody, I believe in this country, has the courage the passion, the conviction, the work ethic, and the leadership of the next speaker. Now, Nigel's taken a bit of a grief, a bit of abuse over the years, but what he has done is truly remarkable. And that's why, of course, the establishment hates him so much. And sometimes it's hard to tell the truth. Sometimes it's hard against all the pressure to stick at it. But that's what we at Reform do, and that is what Nigel does. And that's why I knew that the right thing that would give us an absolute turbocharged rocket boost at the start of this election campaign was for Nigel to get stuck in. And that, of course, is exactly what's happened. And that's why we've gone from, we've gone from sort of somewhere in the early to mid-teens in the polls. Where are we now? 18, 19, 21 poll had us at 24. Polls at 20, 21. I tell you what, though. The poll that matters is on Thursday. Four days to go. And what I need to know from all of you is that you're going to work your socks off. Because with your help, with your enthusiasm, commitment and energy, we will get millions and millions and millions of people to vote for reform, to vote for change. So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank Nigel, all our candidates, the effort, the work that's gone in. But above all, folks, I want to know, are you with us? Yeah! I can't hear you. Are you with us? Yeah! Are you with us? Yeah! Thank you very much. July the 4th, Vote Change, Vote Reform UK. Thank you.